We are here with European Commissioner Marianne Thyssen on her first visit to SEDEFOP. Commissioner Thyssen, uh, I would like to welcome you to SEDEFOP and uh, thank you for being here and talking to us. Uh, and my first question is that uh, about SEDEFO becoming part of uh, DG Employment's portfolio when you took up uh, your duties in uh, 2014. How is this relationship shaping up? Well, uh, I must say that I was very happy that uh, this came in the portfolio of employment. Uh, CDFOP is about skills and skills are very much important for employment. And what we have to do is to build a bridge to bring together the world of work and the world of learning, the world of, uh, of business and the world of skills. And I think uh, CDFOP is a very important partner there. You have your experience, you have your expertise, uh, we have an, on our agenda a uh, new uh, European skills agenda, we will launch it this year and I really am happy that I can count on this expertise. Uh, we really value your expertise and your experience and uh, I hope that we con can continue as we started one year ago. Uh, it means that we continue to work in a very good relationship. Uh, we'll come to the skills agenda uh, a bit later, but first I would like to ask you about uh, the 40 years that uh, SEDEFOP celebrated in 2015. And uh, then you told us that uh, you feel that SEDEFOP is more relevant than ever. Uh, how do you see its role being reinforced in the coming years? Well, w what we see, I think skills are more and more important. Uh, the more I go in depth in my dossiers, the more I speak with people all over the place in Europe, I see that skills is really one of the most important tools we have. We live in an ever faster changing world. It's about uh, demographic change, it's about globalization, it's about digitalization. And what you see is that this has a huge influence on the way society is organized, but also on the way of work on the economy and we have to take care that this, this, the right skills are there to stay competitive. People must have the right skills to be able to enter the labour market, to flourish on that labour market, also for their personal happiness. But uh, employability, skills for employability, this is more and more important and that is something that we really have to stress. And employability for some people in the past it was a kind of a dirty word. For me it's not at all. The work, labour is a dimension of people's life. Having a job is the best protection against poverty. It's the best way to be integrated in uh, economy but also in society. So having the right skills is very important and again there CDFOP is our preference partners to help us with uh, underpinning that policy. And obviously employability and employment is one of the top priorities of uh, the Juncker uh, Commission. Absolutely, we had in our mission, the, the mission of the whole college, not only of me as the Commissioner for Social Affairs and Employment and Skills, uh, the mission of the whole college is about jobs, growth, uh, democratic change and, uh, and skills. This is really uh, what it's all about. And the new skills agenda, which uh, uh, will be launched uh, in the coming weeks, uh, is one initiative in that direction. Uh, how can uh, CEDEFOP contribute? It has already contributed uh, to uh, drawing up the agenda, but how can it also contribute in its in implementation? Well, the, if, I, if we look at the three main strengths of this agenda, then we see that it's really about uh, what uh, CDFOP is really doing. Uh, and that's why, of course, we were happy that we could count on CDFOP's expertise and CDFOP's input and uh, inspiring documents and uh, exchanges of you to, uh, to prepare this agenda. But the three main strengths is, first of all, we want to skill people, to upskill people, lifelong learning, uh, reskilling, uh, because they need, they will have more transitions in their lives and they must have the right skills at the right moment. A second strength is about transparency, recognition, visibility of the competences people have. They have skills, sometimes they gained it in an informal environment. Uh, many people come from abroad, from third member states, or even when they go cross-border within Europe, you must, we must ensure that the skills people have are visible 
and are comparable. And this is also a very, uh, a, a very huge uh, part of your work in CDFOP. And then we have the third part that is uh, important, the third big uh, heading. This is about intelligence. What are the trends? What are the skills we need in the future? And there we know for sure that it is not something about one size fits all. Um, as the director uh, of CDFOP told me, we have to go into the countries, we have to look what's locally going on. So skills intelligence must be done in a smart way. And also this is something where we can count on the expertise uh, and the input, of course, the work, the hard work of the people of CDFOP. Uh, a group of people that uh, need to have uh, access to new skills or to have their skills recognized is the refugees, migrants uh, that um, uh, obviously now are uh, a very hot topic in Europe. Um, what steps is the Commission taking towards that direction and how can CEDEFOP contribute uh, here as well? Well, I think uh, what we have to do or uh, what I said already from the first moment we saw this huge inflow of uh, refugees and migrants is that it is very important that they have access to the labour market. Because if you want to have an inclusive society, a, a society where you have cohesion between the people that are living there, the best thing you can do is give entrance to the labour market for those people. So we are, what we did is we called together all the managers of the uh, European Social Fund, um, agencies of the member states to explain how Europe can help, how Europe can help with funds, funding from the European Social Fund, funding from the European aid to the most deprived, and we explain then how they can use it. We promise them that if they want to modify, to amend an operational program, that we are at their side to do it in a flexible way and quickly. So we can help with funds, we can help with uh, influencing member states or asking them to give them access to the labour market as soon as possible, but of course we have then the skills question. Everywhere when you talk about labour market, economy, competitiveness uh, and integrating an, an inclusive society, skills comes at the forefront. And here CDFOP can of course be of great help. Uh, we have among the refugees many young people, they have to go back to school. Sometimes during two, three years they haven't been in school anymore. They have to go back to school, they have to be skilled. The adults probably have to be reskilled. they have to learn the language, but also uh, to be skilled, to be uh, able to entrance and to be useful in the labour market of Europe. And of course this uh, recognition of skills, this um, visibility, this comparability, there also with the tools Euro uh, CDFOP has, uh, I think we can use them very much also to host the refugees in a proper way. And last but not least, uh, vocational education and training um, sometimes has a, a, a rather negative connotation. Uh, it hasn't been the first choice uh, in many uh, countries in the past. You've said that we have to make it a first choice. How can we make that happen? I'm absolutely convinced that vocational education and training must be a first choice and not a second option. It is not s such a thing that you in the end start after you have failed in other things that you didn't probably like. Uh, we need people that have a good vocational education and training if we want to be competitive, if we want quality of living uh, for all the people in the society. We need these people and we have to show more respect, more respect, more quality. Of, of VET, of course, also. Uh, what we agreed upon in Riga under the Latvian presidency was also that VET is important, but it cannot be a dead end. So you have to organize it in a way that people who, who go on the VET path, that they, when they are 18, 90, 20 years old, they can make a choice to continue to go for a third level attainment. So this is all important. To have VET is important, and there also we have to take care of quality. We have to look what is needed on the labor market. The skills that people get also under VET trainings must be relevant for the labour market. And I think CDFOP can be of great help here by bringing together people from the business and people from the education side. 
uh, bring together all the information we have. What is needed? What is the, what is the, the, the curriculum that we need to train those people? How can we do it? Bringing people together to learn from each other. That's what we also do under the European Social Fund. But I think together, CDFOP and uh, certain services and the agencies in the member states on the European Social Fund, I think we can all work together to make it really happen that uh, VET is a first choice. And we have to uh, show more respect also for these professions. That's my deep conviction. Definitely. And a lot of work uh, that SEDEFOP has been doing in the past few years is focused on quality and on bringing uh, the different actors together. So if, I, if we say this, it is in fact because we learned it from the CDFOP studies. We have to bring it into practice and now to see that it is something that we can bring into society. Not only among people who know exactly what's going on, but we have to, to influence the thoughts in society on this and then uh, it will happen. And then we will see more respect and this vet will be more attractive for young people that have to make their choice and for their parents that are often influencing their choice, of course. Yes. Commissioner, thank you very much for talking to us and uh, for coming to Sedefop. Thank you. It's yeah, a pleasure. I hope here. I can come back soon. <laughs>